Welcome to Spreadsheet Geek. In this video, we'll take a look at compound annual growth rate. We'll define the term and look at several ways of calculating it in Excel. This video was made using Microsoft Excel 2019. So what is compound annual growth rate? A good way to think of this is in the context of an investment. If you hold an investment for a number of years, it may be up in some years and down in others. But the compound annual growth rate is the one rate of return if applied to the beginning balance in every subsequent year would get you to the same end point. Compound annual growth rate is in effect a smoothed compounding rate of return. It's a hypothetical return, but it's very useful in that it can be used to compare one investment's performance to another. Suppose we had the following investment scenario. We'll start out in year one, which will be January 1st, 2016, with a balance of $100. And over the subsequent five years, we had the following annual returns. And there's one year, the third year, where we had a negative return. This is our investment scenario. Let's compute the compound annual growth rate of this investment. But before we do that, we're going to compute the actual ending balance. This is a fairly simple matter. We'll just take our beginning balance and multiply by one plus the rate of return for that year. And we'll get to that balance and autofill that down. So we have an ending balance of $120.24. I'm going to give you four ways to compute compound annual growth rate and we'll put those in the cells right below the labels. The first way is, in my view, the most tedious. You use this formula where you multiply a factor together for each year. Take that to the 1 divided by n power and subtract 1. You can pause the video if you want to study that a bit further. Here's the same formula in red if you want to reference that. And in order to keep this video moving, I went ahead and typed in that formula offline. Here's my result. You can see that if you go to trace precedence here, I'm pulling in each annual return into these cells here, and I'm raising this to the power of one divided by B7, which is the five for five years, subtracting one. That gets me to a compound annual growth rate of 3.75%. The only thing I would point out about this method of determining compound annual growth rate is that if you raise something to a power in Excel and you have some sort of mathematical operation you're performing within that, you need to enclose that within parents. That's a common mistake to forget that. And in fact, if you take out the parents, even though you would think the order of operations would take over. It, it gives you a wildly erroneous result. I would point out also that compound annual growth rate is not the same as average annual return. You'll notice that the average annual return is down here is 3.90%, not 3.75%. Let's now go ahead and prove that this compound annual growth rate is correct. We'll take our same $100 starting balance and we'll apply that growth rate to it. We'll multiply by one plus this. And I'm gonna hit the F4 key to make that an absolute reference in my formula. We'll go to this hypothetical compounding balance and you'll see we get to the well within a rounding error uh, the same ending result. The second method of computing compound annual growth rate is using this formula. This formula is much more 
compact and easy to use. All you need is the beginning balance of your investment, the ending balance, and the number of years, which can be a fraction. So once again, I'm showing the formula in red for your reference. Let's type that one in. We'll take our ending balance divided by our beginning balance. Close that off, raise it to a power of within parents, one divided by the number of years and subtract one. And we get the exact same answer. The third way of computing compound annual growth rate is really the same as the second way, but it makes use of an Excel function called power. If you type in power, this is a very simple function. It takes a number to a power. So if I had two and I take it to a power of two, that would be two squared or four. That's all the power function does. We can incorporate the power function in here. And our number will be ending balance divided by beginning balance. So that'll be this divided by this. And the nice thing about doing it this way is that you don't have to worry about the parents as much. The power we're taking this to will be one divided by the number of years. We'll close that off and then kind of separately, we'll just subtract one. And that gets us to the exact same result using the power function. The last way I'll give you to compute compound annual growth rate is using the RRI function or rate of return on investment, I suppose is what that stands for. If you use this function, you can compute compound annual growth rate. Now, this function asks for the number of periods, the present value, and the future value. So it's given in the context of looking into the future, but we can use it to look into the past when we already know the present value and the future value and the number of years. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in my present value would be this and my future value is this what is the rate of return it's also 3.75 percent now one thing I didn't really mention is how sanitized this data is we start on January 1st and this is nice and neat exactly one year what if you have an investment that starts in the middle of a year and ends in on some odd date? How would you handle that? Well, these formulas are very flexible and that is no problem at all. I'm going to paste a new table down here and let's take a look at this. The key is this year column actually, and these look like nice round numbers, but the way I computed these actually is with a day count. So I'm let, let's go ahead and trace precedence. I'm taking this date, subtracting this date, that's the A16 minus A15, and dividing by 365 to get a year. So if we take some strange dates like this, let's paste those in. Now we're starting on February 23rd, 2016. Our first year, every year ends on that same date until we get to the end, which is 410. So the way I'm computing my fractional years and adding each year subsequently works out pretty well for me. You'll notice that the compound annual growth rate went up a little, even though we have the same annual returns. And that's mainly because this last year is a fractional year. It's only 0.13 years with uh, this rate applied. So that makes a shorter time period with the same return and that's going to drive our compound annual growth rate a little bit higher. But they all s continue to work the same way. I hope you found this video on compound annual growth rate interesting and informative. Please consider hitting my subscribe button if you'd like to see future videos in your feed. Feel free to leave a comment in the comments section, or if nothing else, uh, I'd appreciate you hitting the thumbs up button. Thank you for visiting Spreadsheet Geek.